he was Khatmun Nabiyyin, the final messenger or the seal of all prophets, he was given the best, as we all know, book, which is the Quran. And he was a very, very humble man at the same time. When we talk about at we'll go now to the linguistic aspect in the Arabic language. at lughatan it is defined as being at tadallul to humble oneself. at lughatan in the Arabic language, linguistically, means at to humble oneself. When we go to the Sharia, istilahan, uh, التواضع ما معنى التواضع استلاحا a summary of some or some of the definition of uh, that I found بإذن الله تعالى and for those who want to go back they can go to الذريعة إلى مكارم الشريعة للراقب الأصفهاني he mentioned that هو وسط بين الكبر والضعة basically he's saying that it's uh, in between in between Al-Kibr, which means one that is arrogant, and to put oneself low to the point where you seem to be inferior. Being humble does not mean that you make yourself inferior. To put yourself down where, to the point where people, you don't really get your hukuk and your rights. That is not being humble. Being humble means that you obviously have to not have any kibar, but at the same time, don't put yourself to the point where you seem to be um, an inferior person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and the slaves of the most beneficent are those who walk on earth in humility until uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in this ayah and calm and when the foolish address them with bad words they reply back with mild words of gentleness these are the ibadur rahman the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't curse they don't use foul language when the people speak to them in a foul way they're very patient Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in a number of times he was called many things amongst the things that he was called was Majnoon wa billah. They said he was crazy. They called him Sahir. They said he was somebody who was a magician. And other names that aren't befitting to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did he reply with violence? Did he reply with the words, similar words or words that are even worse? Or did he make dua for them? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua for his people. Hoping that amongst them there will be Muslims. This is how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Their, their narrations of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding tawadu' I have some of them insha'Allah. And I will start with this narration that is narrated by Umar ibn al-Khattab. Qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this hadith is sahih. You can find it in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. لا تطروني كما أطرأت النصارى ابن مريم or ابن مريم إنما أنا عبد فقولوا عبد الله ورسوله He صلى الله عليه وسلم said Do not exceed in praising me. Don't overdo it. As the Christians overpraised Isa عليه السلام to the point where they made him God. I am a slave of Allah, therefore call me the slave of Allah and his Rasul. That's it. Wasafa nafsahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi abd. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called himself a slave. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put himself to that level, the level that we are in. Of course, he's a messenger, he's much better than us, but he put himself as a slave. And this is from his tawadu' sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from him being humble. We have many hadiths. You would come to, or people would come to see the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a gathering, and they couldn't distinguish him from the other companions. 
Look at that. He did not have a specific chair he would sit on. He did not wear a specific thing on his head to distinguish him from his companions to the point where they say, you know what, that is the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People couldn't distinguish him from others. He was a very, very simple man. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't have what we have now from the fantastic beds and the queen and the king size beds that we have. You sleep on a small mat, you know, on the ground sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very, very humble. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he and the companions would walk together, he would teach them the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would tell them how to do things in a humble way, in a nice way. He would explain things to them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we say Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was humble, yes, we say he was humble. Actually, he was very, very humble, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have another hadith that is also that is narrated, I should say, by Anas, and you can find this in Kitabul Adab, the chapter of manners, in uh, At Tirmidhi, the Sahih of Tirmidhi. You can find this, inshallah. And he said, "Lam yakun shaksun ahab ilayhim min Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." قال وكانوا إذا رأوه لم يقوم لما يعلمون من كراهيته لذلك. There was no one more beloved to them, the companions, Anas is telling us رضي الله عنه, than the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And if they were to see him, they would not stand up for him because they knew he disliked that. You go to specific gatherings now, the person. They will stand for that person out of respect, right? And some of them will even go to the point where they kiss the person's hands and do things like this. You know, they do it out, out of respect. But the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't like when people stood up for him. He didn't like that. He disliked that. This is the meaning of the shade that is makruh, something that is disliked. He didn't like that. He was very humble. Treat me normal. That was his, the way he would like to be seen as. If you go to the books of a hadith, and if you go to the Quran, you would find a lot of ayat talking about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You had a man that came to him and told him that he didn't do any justice. That he didn't do any justice. We have to find out how did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam treat that person. You had a number of incidents and situations where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be with the companions, and something would happen. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he did not request them to be at his service for certain things. He would help himself to do things. We have a hadith here, and this is. The hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. Qila li Aisha. This is the. It is said. Was said to Aisha. Mada kana yamul Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi baytihi. What did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do in his house? What did he used to do? She said, "Kana basharan." Um, until the hand, end of the hadith, when it comes to an issue regarding his clothing, he used to deal with that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, in the end of the halaqa, inshallah, I'll go and b back to the actual aqwal salaf uh, fi tawadu' the sayings of the salaf regarding being humble. Before that, inshallah, we have the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, In the battle, or in many battles, he wouldn't be, or from what I understand, all the battles that he would go to, he would try to be in the first, amongst the first people. We know he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, wasn't somebody who was a 
he wasn't a Jabban, he was Shuja. He was somebody who was very, very brave. And he would be in the front line of the battlefield. In most of the battles, from the best of my knowledge. And this itself shows tawadu. This itself shows tawadu. When somebody is in the battlefield, in the front, not afraid to lose their lives, this shows that this person is just like the other people. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it came to matters regarding everyday social matters, everyday things, he would specify specific times for the companions to deal with those issues, as now they have something called counseling now. That took its place. You have counseling, people give advice to one another, you know you should do this, you should do that. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to give some time from his day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to help people, what they needed, how they were doing. If a companion didn't come to the Salatul Jama'ah, I repeat, Salatul Jama'ah, something that a lot of people take easy these days. Him and the companions, you know, they would worry about that person. What happened? They missed Salatul Jama'ah. He was concerned with the everyday Muslims, the everyday companions he used to see on a regular basis. This is what really what tawadu really means. And when we go back to the kutub of the seer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we'll find that tawadu is something that we really lack. Now, bidnillah ta'ala, the Muslims that are living in our times, over 1400 years, now we're in the month of Safar, 1436, from the hijrah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Big gap. We have specific things that he has taught us. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it came to issues regarding fiqh, he would teach the companions. It is wajib upon us to know the basic things regarding the fiqh. And he would teach them in the best way. Tawadu al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his humbleness. When the Arabi came to the masjid that is meant for ibadah, وَبَالَ فِي المسجد, He urinated in the mosque. The companions were very, very angry. Very upset. He said, leave him, let him finish. He knew that this person, if he continued, if they, well, he was disturbed, the najis, this uncleansed thing that comes out of the human body, will be all over the place. Therefore, more difficult to make, uh, to clean. He explained to him in his humble way how to deal with and you know what the message is made for. And this man was very, very happy. You have an incident where a man, a young man, Shab, is ta'dana min Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam zina. He took he wanted to take permission from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to commit the fahasha called zina. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made him understand. The companions were angry. They were angry. How come this young man is asking to make a permission to commit this fahisha from the kabair, from the major sins? He explained it to him. Do you, would you like this for your maternal aunt? Would you like this for your paternal aunt? For your mother? For your sister? He made him understand. And this young man came out in the end of his sitting with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he and this was the hated, the most hated thing to him, zina. After this gathering, the sitting conversation he had with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, humble. He talked to people in a humble way. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to smile. Smiling is from being humble. Frowning and being angry. When you see your Muslim brothers and sisters, it's not from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He didn't used to be angry when he sees his companions, like when it's, when it's time for giving salam, I should say. He used to, alhamdulillah, show a good face. As we know, he said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said that smiling to your brother, or to the face of your brother, is considered sadaqah. Hadi yu'tabar sadaqah. This is considered sadaqah when you smile. This was the head of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He used to walk in a humble way. 
Now we have a lot of Muslims that come to the masjid. When they walk, they walk with a lot of pride. Whether they be affected by the hip-hop culture, and they seem to be walking with some sort of problem with their leg, or back, something is wrong with them, you would say, but this is just the way they are. And some of them, they say, you know, I'm used to it. You have to change it. Change the way you walk. When young children, you know, have difficulty walking specific ways, you know, they are taught how to walk. Put your toes out, you know. Um, even if there are some sort of medical issues, they'll be giving, you know, insults. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. These are medical issues. But, when you do it out of kibr, when this is the luggage that you carry from, you know, when you were not a practicing Muslim, you have to change this. When you stick your, you know, when you look at your parents, and this is for the young ones, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us about bir al You know, being good to your parents. He taught us how to deal with our parents. Now you have the young children who, you know, they look at their parents in the eye in an evil way. This is not tawadu. If you're humble, you look down, you don't even look at their eyes. A lot of people, they do that. When they, not a lot of people, some people who have been given tawfiq and the understanding. They don't even look at the eyes of their parents. They look down. Out of shyness, out of respect, humbling themselves. Now you have young children who actually beat their parents up. The opposite. They have kibr. Yes, violently. Muslims, yes, we have Muslim children who fight their parents. This is humbleness. This is not humbleness. This is kibr. This is also from the ma'asi, from the sins. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and understanding of this. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the general meaning, basically if you're strict, if you're too tough with them, they would leave you. They would leave you. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew how to make da'wah to them. He was known as al-sadiq al-masduq. He was known as al-ameen. He knew how to deal with people before the message, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was given this. These are from the special things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. And the mashayikh have talked about this before, how he was cleansed twice. So he would, you know, not be like me and you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he knew how to deal with specific situations, specific things. He knew how to deal with the saghir, the young, the middle age, and the elder, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is from the fiqh, the understanding that he had, and the understanding that he wanted us to have. See, all these things we talk about right now, after me, myself, before, aren't just meant for us to sit down and listen to and that's it, we finish. We have to actually try to implement. The theme is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Afdalu al-khalqi masha ala wajhi al-ard. The best, you know, creation to walk on the face of the earth. This conference is not something very light, not very simple, not very easy. It's heavy. Because there's a lot of information that you have to take in, but you have to make tatbiq. We have one of the companions. He understood the Quran, or a lot of the companions, but one of them used to implement, or I should say, yes, implement. He had a specific understanding of the Quran. Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was also known as the Mufassir of the Quran. The companions, when Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu would gather with the companions, there would be this young young man with them, sitting, younger than the other companions, and they were thinking, How come he's here? What's so special about him? 
Umar ibn Khattab asked him for the tafsir of إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ The companions, he wanted to know from the companions first, they didn't know. And this is not something that is naqs fihim. This is not something that we should look down at them for. Hasha wa kalla, absolutely not. But they spoke according to their knowledge. And when you speak according to your knowledge, you'll be considered somebody who is humble. If you say Allah wa alam, alhamdulillah, you're staying humble. But if you try to answer everything that you, so you can be seen as somebody who knows and you don't know, well, you're committing sins. Let's go back ta'ala, to what happened. And they could not answer this. Umar ibn Khattab asked Ibn Abbas and he mentioned that this is the coming near of the death of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Makkah. And he said, basically, this is what he knew about this ayah, radiallahu anhu. He made a dua for this young man. And you make dua for your brothers and sisters, it's also considered being humble. He said, Allahumma faqihu fi din wa alimhu ta'wil. O Allah, give him understanding of the religion and give him understanding of the tafsir. A ta'wil, a tafsir. And he was known as the Mufassir of the Qur'an. He was a marja'. You know, people used to go back to him to understand the Qur'an. Making dua for your children and for your brothers and sisters is something that is also considered being humble. If you see your brother and sister in need, they need something. They're not healthy. Financially, they're not doing very well. You make dua for them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can put you in their place at any time. And this is the way of the Muslim. Al-Kibr, which is the opposite of At-Tawadu', is something that is very, very bad. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من الكبر لن يدخل الجنة كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم whoever has a mustard seed I don't know if you have seen a mustard seed before very small right amount of pride in their heart do not enter Jannah that much forget about Cursing at people, looking down at people, belittling, belittling people because they are from a certain race, community. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in another hadith that Allah subhanahu wa taala does not look at how you look, basically your physical form. It's a long, it's a you know middle hadith. It's not, it's a, it's a short hadith, not very short but pretty short. But he looks at the people's hearts. The taqwa. How humble that person, or how much that person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I should say. The piety. And if you do not have, and understand that, you know, we mentioned, what did we say? at uh, is in the Lugha, in the Arabic language. Who, who wrote this down? at tadallul which means, humbling oneself. You cannot, ha- you cannot basically be humble and not be pious. And you can't be pious and not humble. They coincide. They go together. And this is the way we try to be in Allah Ta'ala, make tatbiq. Inshallah, I'll go to some of the aqwal of the salaf. Fit tawadu. The salaf of the ummah. The ones that are before us, the pious predecessors. سؤل ابن عياض عن التواضع فقال يخضع للحق وينقاض له ويقبله ممن قاله فضيل بن عياض he was asked about التواضع and he said it is to surrender to the truth and to submit to the truth and accept it 
from whoever says it. It's not your way or the highway. It's not the way you want it and that's it. Everybody else's opinion is done. That is not being humble. If something is told to you or said to you and is true, you have to accept it. الحق يقال ولو كان مرا The truth is said even if it's sour. You have something to say to somebody, you say it. It's true, you say it, obviously, with good manners, in the proper way. That person has to accept the truth. If he doesn't accept the truth, this is a sin on him, and he's not from the people who are humble. ليس من المتواضعين So this is the understanding of the Salaf of the Ummah. This is how they understood at tawadu'. And when we, you know, there are many aqwal from the Salaf about at tawadu'. And when you look at the way, you know, they explain at tawadu' with us to us, it's not rocket science, it's very simple. Lakin a shaytan wa billah haris. The shaytan is very, very eager to take us from the right path and put us to the path that wa'iyadu billah he is he wants us to go which is nara jahannam nas'alallah al-afiyah qatada qala qatada man u'tiya malan aw jamalan wa thiyaban wa ilman thumma lam yatawadha kana alayhi wa balan yawm al-qiyamah Subhanallah. Qatada, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. He said, whoever is given wealth, beauty, clothing, knowledge, and they don't humble themselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will suffer these bad consequences, yawm al-qiyamah. They will suffer the bad consequences, yawm al-qiyamah. Why? Who can tell me why? Who can answer? Why? They were given wealth, they were given beauty, clothing, knowledge, and they're not humble. Why are they going to suffer the bad consequences on the Day of Judgment? Who can tell me, inshallah? It's very easy. Naam? Kibir. Pride. He was pride. He was proud. This person was proud. Instead of, you know, Looking at the people who don't have these things and saying, Alhamdulillah, that Allah gave me this. Instead of looking at the other side, he or she continued. And they continued and they continued. And they will suffer these consequences because this is from the ma'asi, from the sins that one should be um, very, very, very careful of. And that is a very, very beautiful saying that Qatada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, um, had said. Now you have different scenarios that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you know time is going, ta'ala, so um, for those who want to go back, insha'Allah, um, there are many books that you can go back to of a hadith that talk about the tawadu of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now to talk about the, uh, generally, insha'Allah, um, as a Muslim community, we consist of males and females. We have males that are in the masjid and females that are in the masjid or in the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to understand that the only way that one can accept, accept the truth is being humble. Being humble. Whether it comes to a ta'asub al madhhabi you know, from the people who actually blind follow a specific madhab. My sheikh, my sheikh, you know, said this, my sheikh said this, my sheikh said this. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said this. And you're stuck to your sheikh. Without respect, be humble. Your sheikh is not even close to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa 
So a ta'asub al-madhhabi is something that has affected a lot of people in the community. But there's also hikmah and ways to deal with people who um, like to blind follow a specific school of thought. You have to be humble when you speak to them. You know, when we tell them, you know, the son of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to do this when you're standing, to put your hands like this, you know, when you're doing al-tahiyyat, uh, you know, do it like this. Th- there's a way. But unfortunately now what we have lacking is the hikmah um, of communicating with that person, the wisdom of how to communicate with that person in order to let them accept the haq. We want them to accept the haq, but you don't know how to convey that message. You don't have the hikmah, the wisdom. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in his ahadith, he shows us the proper way to deal with different situations. And you can take those situations and deal with them now. Yes, there are issues you know, and situations that he didn't deal with that we have to deal with now. But there are ways and equations that we were given. Subhanallah. Equations. You go to physics class, you go to algebra, you go to all these you know, nice math classes that I didn't really like. They give you equations. You deal with it like that. That's it. We have the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the equation. We deal with it in the situation that we are in. Subhanallah. Al-hikmah is something that as a Muslim ummah we are lacking. One of the things I would like to be the Ta'ala stress is At-tawadu' al-talab al-ilmi lil-ulama Having uh, humbleness the students of knowledge being humble towards the ulama Qadr Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-ulama'u warathatu al-anbiya that the messengers are the inheritors of the prophets and that they did not inherit wealth rather they inherited you know knowledge and whoever takes it has taken some, uh, it has taken uh, it in abundance, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had mentioned in the hadith. The ulama, the scholars that the students of knowledge get the knowledge from. I'm a talib al-ilm, just like you. They say Sheikh, but I'm a talib al-ilm, and you may have more knowledge than me. In a lot of manners. I'm talking about the ulama, the ones who have given knowledge, have been given knowledge. There is special adab and akhlaq that you have to have when you sit in front of them. When you speak to them. You don't speak to the alam like you speak to your neighbor or your friend or your cousin. Just like you speak to your parents in a specific way and you speak to your parents in a specific way. The ulama, you have to humble yourself. Specific ways to sit when you're sitting in front of them. Specific ways to even ask questions, subhanallah. Uslub li al asila. There's a way you ask questions, right? And these are from the manners that we have to learn. And there's humbleness in this, as we all know. There are certain people that don't get knowledge. They would never get this knowledge. And amongst this, a category is the people who are proud. Al Mutakabir. Because they already think they know it all. Or they think they're too good for certain situations or certain issues. Even when you seek knowledge, you have to humble yourself. Subhanallah. Talibul ilmi or for the talib ilm la bud la bud min tawadu. You have to. You have to be humble. Because if you're not humble, wa'adu billah, you will not um, gain a lot of uh, knowledge. The mawdu is very, very big. It, you know, deserves more time than, you know, thirty odd minutes or forty odd minutes. It deserves um, a couple of lessons, weeks, months. Some of the ulama they used to sit in front of the alim, and they u- didn't used to really, you know. They weren't in there for the knowledge. They were in there to learn the akhlaq of the sheikh. The akhlaq. How he used to speak. Yes, they used to listen to the knowledge, obviously. 
But their main purpose was the akhlaq. The akhlaq of that alam. The manners of that alam. From the manners of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a tawadu' and we have to be in Allah ta'ala uh, understand that. For the husband and the wife, the couple that are married, you know, you have to be in Allah ta'ala understand how to be humble in this situation as well. Also, the child who is being taught, the small child, the parent has to also be humble. This is all in terbiyah. Or, you know, this part of terbiyah, you have to be humble when you are informing that child about a specific thing. Because if you inform them with kibr, you know, and you're angry and you're proud, and you put them down, and you mock them, you know, they're not going to take this nasiha. And this is from the umur or from the things that affairs that somebody who was humble, um, somebody who was given nasiha has to have, which is humility. Inshallah, I'm going to ask some questions, inshallah. After all, this was a, um, you know, a lesson that we, you know, we're just, I wasn't just talking, right? I was, you know, giving you, bin Allah Ta'ala, and myself, ilm nafi' inshallah. Um, a question, bin Allah Ta'ala. For the tulab al-ilm who are listening, inshallah, the students of knowledge. What did I say uh, was the istilah or the definition, sharia definition of um, a tawadu? Three words, four words, five words. MashaAllah. Let me give the brother a chance. Yes. MashaAllah. Jayid. Jayid. Alhamdulillah. Um, but that's not the answer I was looking for. That's not the specific answer I was looking for. The specific answer, uh, the brother, inshallah, tafadal. So it's in between, um, as we said, Jazakallahu khair, and that brother, bin Allah ta'ala. Your name, brother? Umar. Umar, he said, basically between, um, you know, being proud and basically putting yourself down. And the word I used was inferior. It's in between. It's in between. Um, I mentioned two statements from the Salaf. Um, and I mentioned the name of the first one. And I'll say um, the saying again, inshallah. at he said that it is يَخْضَعُ لِلْحَقِّ وَيَنْقَادُ لَهُ وَيَقْبَلُهُ مِمَّنْ قَالَهُ Who was that righteous person who said that statement? Who was that person? I mentioned his name. And his name should be known. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Allah yibarak I also mentioned another statement. And I said it twice. If not more, I might have said it more. Two statements from the Salaf. Uh, and it is, and I'll say it again. مَنْ أُعْطِيَ مَالًا أَوْ جَمَالًا أَوْ ثِيَابًا وَثِيَابًا وَعِلْمًا ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتَوَاضَعْ uh, كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَبَالًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ I said that more than once. More than twice, I believe. Who else except that brother, inshallah? What's your name, brother? Ahmed, MashaAllah. Ahmed's neighbor, yes. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. So we have Ahmed and Sheikh Ibrahim and the other brother, Sheikh Umar, Umar. Sheikh Umar, Bidnillah Ta'ala. They are deserving of prizes, inshaAllah. Talibul Ilmi, seeking knowledge, which we are all here for, Bidnillah Ta'ala. It's Jayid. Actually, it's not Jayid. It's not good. 
it's very, very good to write, inshallah, unless you have them uh, half, half of the, or you have the memory of uh, Al Bukhari, you know, Imam Al Bukhari, or Al Bukhari and Al Shafi, I should say. Imam Shafi'i, when he uh, memorized Lishidda Tihifdihi from the you know, from the strength of his memorization, he used to have to cover one side of the, you'd have a paper book open like this, he had to cover one side, so he didn't memorize that side, you know, because he was focusing on this side. His memory was so strong that if he didn't cover that other side, he would end up memorizing it. Then, you know, uh, things would happen, right? So he's, he's, he's strong, strong in memory. His memory was very strong, and Allah Musta'an, now we have difficulty memorizing one line, two lines and he used to worry about memorizing two pages you know um, you know uh, subhanallah um, if there are any questions I believe the adhan is going to happen I don't think we have any time for adhan two minutes inshallah regarding the topic inshallah don't ask me a question that you have asked uh, or you intend to ask Sheikh Usama Abu Usama al Dhabi, or Sheikh Abdul Aziz inshallah what I spoke about inshallah bin Allah ta'ala you ask insha'Allah and it would be preferable but we have no time to write these questions down uh, you can ask insha'Allah I can take two questions insha'Allah regarding the topic insha'Allah two questions two minutes I don't think anybody asked Sheikh Mu'tasim al-Hamidi any questions too maybe because he couldn't get it ما شاء الله بارك الله فيكم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I just want to remind the brothers and sisters, إن شاء الله. بارك الله فيكم for coming and the weather was very very difficult and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى reward you for coming. There would be more people here most likely, but due to the weather, a lot of them you know have stayed home and maybe they'll come out later when the the vehicles come out in numbers and start cleaning the roads may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you ajar rewards for uh, you know coming to this gathering bi ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people who listen and obey and implement to what we hear wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in